Number 33. <laughs> Everything that crew needs 
be prepared for the success of that. Again, we want to make sure that we get here on time, like I said, the next one, we'll arrive early for the game, we have the third pregame, we get the season. And basically, guys, what we want to do at that point is we want to go through the whole game, everything that we can expect to happen during that game, right? That way we prepare ourselves for all these different situations. So we want to go through, we want to talk about kicking game. We want to talk about scrimmage plays. We're going to have run plays. We want to talk about passing plays. We want to talk about punt plays, right? The biggest thing is make sure that everyone on the group is comfortable when that situation happens. We don't want to be out there looking like, what to say, with deer in the headlights. We want to be prepared for those situations. So make sure we cover those. And like I said, if you have a group that's a younger group, we might need to come a little bit earlier. Instead of being an hour early, we might want to be an hour and a half early. Just we have some extra time to go through and to make sure guys get comfortable and ready to go through it. I like to make three games interactive. No one wants to sit and just listen to someone ramble stuff off to them for an hour. I'm just being honest. I've been in three games where the referees come, they have his cue cards, and he's going through his cue cards, and he's just reading, and we're just sitting there. After 10 minutes, everybody loses interest, right? Nobody's paying attention anymore. He's going through, he's covering everything he wants to cover, but nobody's paying attention. So it's not, it's not right for me. So in that situation, my opinion, you assign a guy a section, you assign a guy a section and say, hey, Chris, you have punk plays. Jamal, you're going to have punk plays. Jason, you're going to have pass plays, right? And let them go through and let them go and conduct that portion of the three man. That kind of keeps everybody in the involved in the game and you're interacting. It's more of a conversation than someone just talking to you or talking at you. <laughs> One of the things that, that's very important is the referee. Make sure if you're in a free game, you let your crew know how you want fouls reported to you. That's very important. Because referee, you have a lot of things that are going through your mind when that foul comes in. You're trying to figure out what the enforcement is, how you're going to enforce it, enforce it, you know, what's the signal for that foul, all those different things. But if you can have your crew report that foul to you in a certain way where it clicks in your mind, that makes that process easier. <laughs> And it helps you to walk through that process, right? And a lot of times, I don't like fouls. I don't like people reporting to me. Uh, I have hold on the green team. I don't know what team green team is, right? And then that takes more process for me, and that takes me out of my rhythm. So for me, I would like you to come in and say, hold an offense. You know, whether and we're going for the previous spot or a spot of the foul or wherever it is, how bad enforcement is going to go. That helps me through my process, and it helps me work through. But in pre game that's the time that you talk to those things. The referees can talk to those things with your crew and explain to them how you want them to report files to you. They might not do it, the crew's not going to do it perfectly every time. But if we have that conversation, it gets them in that mindset set of how it works better for you and how your thought process is going. Uh, we're not going to talk about home schools. We use millions at all during playoffs or anything? Okay, all right, we're not going to talk about that. Same thing like I was saying, we have a long pregame, take breaks. That's one of the things that's important. Take breaks. If your pregame is going to run long. Because after a certain point in time, guys lose focus. They lose attention. You don't really want to go more than an hour. We go an hour, that's a long time to sit there and wait, right? So take a break. We can plan those out. Uh, coaches meeting. This is very important. Make sure you put that coach meeting in. Is that you're going in and you're not establishing a rapport with that coach. You're not just going in and getting plays, brother, because the majority of the time they're not going to tell you what the plays are anyway. Because you're going to go in, you're going to ask them, hey, coach, you have any special plays, any trick plays, any things that we should look out for. But they're going to come out they're going to tell you, no, nah, we're not going to do anything. We're just going to line up and run the ball. The first thing they're going to do is do a, a half-back pass or something crazy, you know? They're not going to tell you. But, what you're doing with that at that point is you're establishing a report with that coach. What you want to come away from that meeting is that that coach feels that you and your crew are ready to work that game. And then they have confidence in you. If you don't establish that with them, that's when you're going to have challenges with that coach. That's when he's going to question everything that you do. If you establish that report with him, when we have a challenge to play throughout, throughout the game, and they ask you to come over or they, you know, talk to the guy on the sideline, and you give them an explanation about why we called that play or who we played what we did, they're more likely to understand and you know, not keep as much grief. But if they come away from that pregame game meeting and they don't have confidence in you, they're going to question every call that you have. You couldn't even call a false start right now. It's always going to be questioned. So 
So that's the thing that we want to do with coaches. <clears throat> and that's pretty good One of the things is coaches, when they ask you questions, if they have, you have an answer for it, give them an answer. If you don't have an answer for it, tell them, I don't have an answer for you right now, coach, but I'll go find out and get back to you. But make sure that you get back to them. If you tell the coach that you're going to go find out the answer to a question, make sure you get back to them. Make sure you get back to them. One of the other things is that when I'm talking to a coach at that point, I will answer the question. If he has a question about a rule, if he has a question about uh, mechanics, and things of that nature, I will answer that question. If he wants to bring up a play that happened last week, or a play that happened the game before, and he wants to ask me, was this a foul? Was that a foul? I'm not going to answer that question. I'm going to tell the coach I wasn't there. I wasn't involved in that game. I don't have an opinion on it. You know, don't let them put you in the game to block you up that way because they will try to do that. And they will try to do it and say, well, last week they allowed us to do this. Well, coach, that was true last week. This is what the rule states and this is what we're going to do. Today. And just be firm on that.
they're now they're really gonna jump on you. They're really gonna be on you because now they know they got you, right? They know they got you, and they're gonna make sure that they're gonna stay on top of it. So you want to keep a cool head at all times, no matter what you're doing. Uh, like I say, body language is important. When we're talking, a lot of us like talking about our hands, and I'm doing that, right? We're talking about our hands, and so we're having this conversation. You want to be cognizant of that and be cognizant of your body language. One of the things I went somewhere one time, and we were, they were talking about your body language. We were speaking to coaches, and if you're having a conversation with a coach and you do this, or you have that conversation with them, what does? Exactly. Exactly. So now your communication is pretty much shut off. He's not going to communicate. One of the other things I saw they were saying is that if you come with your hands this way, you know, guys do things with their hands, but if you're having your hands this way, it's more saying I'm open to a conversation. And we can talk. And we can have a conversation. One of the things that I do, and you'll notice if a coach is really getting on me, I put my hands behind my back and I say it before it goes. If I do this, if you ever see me do this in a game, that means I'm giving him 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna give him 30 seconds, right? I'm gonna stand there, and for 30 seconds, I'm gonna let him get off his chest, whatever he needs to get off his chest, and I'm not gonna say a word. And I stand there, and I will stand eye to eye with him, and he gets 30 seconds. After that 30 seconds, we're gonna tell him, okay, coach, we have to either agree or disagree, or whatnot, but we gotta move on. I'm gonna get out of that conversation at that point. I'm not gonna come back at him, not going to say anything. Okay, coach, I understand. You walk off. Right? That's, that's one of the things. That's just something that I said, like I said, I've learned over time. Um, one other thing is, if you have these conversations with the coach, make sure you get them to the sideline. Don't let them come out the middle of the field. When they come out the middle of the field, they're trying to show you up. That's what they're doing. They're trying to show you up. And so, one of the tricks is, when the coach comes out, if he goes for you go start talking to him. When he starts to come out on the field, stand for a second. You know what? Don't judge. Don't judge. Say that's a sideline. The coach is coming towards me because he wants to have a conversation. He's going to walk towards me. When I'm talking to him, I say, hey, coach, we can talk. We're going to have this conversation. I want you to come over here. You guys see what happened? Man, we need to follow him. And you walk back to the sideline. Now, we're going to have this conversation on the sideline. Right? That's the truth. That's just one of the things that, that I've learned over the time. Uh, one of the other big things is always have another official with you when you're having these conversations with these coaches. It's your word against his if you don't. If it's just the two of you guys, he can say that you said whatever. You might not have said anything to him. But now, if you have someone there with you, they can vouch for that conversation. They can vouch for the conversation that you're having. Now, that's not going to always work if you work in silence. If you're on the line of script and you work in line of judge, you're going to have to talk to them. Right? And nobody's going to be able to get over there and help you out with that. So you're going to have to, you know, but at that point, just make sure that you're saying, like I said, keep a cool head at all times and be confident in yourself. And you figure out, young guys, you're going to try to be coaches. Like um, Jeff was saying earlier, coaches, they're going to try it. That's just all to it. They're going to try it. And they're going to try to say things to get a rise out of it. Right? You just have to be big enough to be able to not allow them to get that rise out of it. Anytime there's an unusual play or an unusual ruling, go talk to the coach. Explain to them what happened. Because they don't know. Uh, honestly, they don't know. And uh, high school ball, uh, our referees might get now sometimes. Okay. Especially if the referee's not mic'd up and you have a ruling and it has a funky uh, enforcement or something, an unusual enforcement, they have no idea what's going on. Right? You have to go over there and talk to them. That's one of the biggest things. One of the biggest complaints coaches have about officials is really not about our calls. Because they can adjust to our calls. If we're consistent throughout the game, and we're consistent, we're making the same calls on both sides of the ball, they don't complain about that. The biggest complaint they have is that we don't communicate with them. That's the biggest complaint that they have. Because they don't know what's going on. If you communicate with them, you, you constantly communicate, you're an objective communicator, your game is going to go smoother, and the coaches will be much happier. Talk to him. The coach is just irate. He's brought up. 
and right is given that 30 seconds, right? So the biggest thing is you have to find out what's going on. What is the coach's motivation? Because he has a motivation for you to over. His motivation should be one of three or four things. He might legitimately have a question. Right? We got to actually has a question. Listen to him. See if he has a question. If he's upset, he's just vent. Give him the opportunity to vent. Right? Or the other thing that happens a lot of times is coaches will call you over there and they'll flush you out and just get a rise out of the team. If your team is flat, they're not playing well, he has to do something to figure out how he can motivate his team. They will call you over there and they will blow up just to motivate their team. Right? So that's the thing that you have to figure out. You figure out what your motivation is when you get over there. And you can definitely spend the first 10 seconds of that conversation. Trey will tell you, used to tell me all the time, he still does, is that listen more you talk. Listen more you talk. Um, been told that God gave you two ears and one mouth so you can listen more than you talk. Listen to them. Figure out what their motivation is. One of the big things is the question deserves an answer. If he asks a question, he deserves an answer. So you're going to give him an answer. A statement is his opinion. No answer is necessary. Right? He goes over there. He says, you guys suck. You're making all the calls against us today. We haven't got one call today. That's his opinion. I don't, don't respond. Okay? No response is necessary. I'll say it that way, right? Because no response that you're going to give is going to satisfy. The only thing that's going to do is put an aggravated situation. That doesn't put the priority for the call. But if he asks you, hey, you call a hole in 77, what do you do? All right, coach, wrap it straight. That's point of the tech. That deserves an answer. Again, that's another one. If they ask a question, you don't have an answer, it's okay to tell them, coach, I don't know, but I'll go find it out. And I'll come back to you. But you make sure, and then let you put in action, that you get back to them with that answer. Bold rules. Silence can't be born. Exactly. Can't be discord. Like I said, that 30 seconds, silence. Can't discord. <coughs> These are two examples of poor communication. <laughs> if you don't see this, this is Bobby Petrino. He's probably. This is Bobby, right? Yeah. Bobby Petrino. He will do this all day long. And if you notice, that guy, he's working the play. And he's just standing around screaming at the top of his lungs. Right? But every time you play that body does, every time that he would turn around to communicate with him, he would stop and just walk off. That was his moment. He was trying to act to me. So that's the bad communication. Here's another. And he's just, as you guys see there, he's just losing. But at this point, he's trying to motivate his team. That's what he's doing. His team is flat. So he was going off, he was trying to get a rise out of the road video to show them that he was going to fight for them and he needed them to fight for him. That is his motivation. And you have to understand that. Uh, do we do post games with Jordan time? Big Gators. Huh? Big Gators. Big Gators. Ah, Big Gators. 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 Big Gators.